Welcome to this time of Sunday meditations. Coming to you from St Andrew's Uniting Church here in Sunbury. On this fourth Sunday of September, which means it is also the fourth Sunday of our season of creation this year, with its overall theme of listen to the voice of creation. Our focus this week falls on the role the church plays in the action for creation. The church's participation and actions are important in the push for the protection of God's creation. The church must lead and live by example, for we, more than anyone, should appreciate that we are obligated to protect and uphold the dignity of all that is God's creation. We gather in the image of the Creator who is a community of love. We gather in the name of the Redeemer who reconciles all of creation. We gather in the presence of the Life Giver who inspires new life and renews it. Way back in the 13th century, theologian Hildegard described God in these words, Praise be to the Holy Trinity. God is sound and life, creator of the universe, source of all life, whom the angels sing, wondrous light of all mysteries, known or unknown to humankind, and life that lives in all. Incredible words, an incredible description of our Creator. Let us speak to our Creator as we pray. Holy Trinity, God of creation, we thank you for the beauty of the earth and all creation. Help us to always hear the call to be good stewards of your gifts, the caretakers of all you have entrusted to us on earth. Teach us always to recognise, cherish and enjoy the goodness in all of creation. Teach us reverence for every person and all living things. O oh God, help us use your gifts wisely and share them generously. 
whisper in our hearts, a reminder that we are but guardians of your abundances. We are called to pass on to the next generation. Let all we do reflect your love and care, we pray. Amen. The prophet Hosea opens what is the fourth chapter of his writings with these words. Hear the word of the Lord, O people of Israel. For the Lord has an indictment against the inhabitants of the land. There is no faithfulness or loyalty, no knowledge of God in the land. Swearing, lying and murder and stealing and adultery break out. Bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore the land mourns and all who live in it languish together with the wild animals and the birds of the air, even the fish of the sea, are perishing. So we make our confession in response to the Creator's indictment. Let us pray. God who is love, and grace. God who brings second chances and reconciliation. God who offers forgiveness and healing. We fall before you admitting our failure to address climate change in a way fitting to its impact on future generations. We confess that we have damaged our environment sometimes unaware of the damage we are doing, sometimes all too aware, but heedless of the costs. We confess that we have borrowed from future generations in order to defend our current way of life, that we have taken advantage of developing nations in order to protect what we believe is ours, that we have burnt away options with little regard for what we were doing, We confess that those with no voice suffer most in the animal kingdom, in our seas and oceans, generations not yet born, the poor and most vulnerable, as the effects of climate change take hold. As we offer our humble confession, aware of the power that forgiveness and reconciliation possesses, Convict us to change our priorities and to count the cost of our global footprint. Prepare us for the challenges with which we must grapple and to do so step by step with the assurance that the more we change our ways, the greater the mitigation of crisis will be. Hear us, God of all creation. Heal us and forgive us. Amen. In his letter to the church in Rome, the Apostle Paul wrote these wonderful words. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So our sins are forgiven and we say thanks be to God. I want then to turn to a portion of the wisdom literature in the book of Psalms in chapter 8. We read, 
The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up, at the very first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker and I was daily his delight. Rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. For the word in scripture, for the word among us, for the word within us, we give thanks. Commented in recent weeks, as we have pondered this theme of listen to the voice of creation, that there are many voices that have been muted in the public discourse, discourse I should say, around climate change and the ethics of earth keeping. Unfortunately, these are often the voices of those who suffer the impacts of climate change the most. These are often the voices of people who hold generational wisdom about how to live gratefully within the limits of the land, handed down through the cultures of the world's indigenous peoples, living in the sacred school of life. These are often the voices of a diminishing diversity of more than human species. The voice of the earth. And together they are the voice of creation. And in this season of creation, we are called to listen to, to pay heed to, and to learn from these very voices. Now, while the voice of the church has become sidelined in many respects in our contemporary Western society, it remains important that the voice of the church remains alive and focused. We are helped in this endeavour by the voices of people like Richard Rohr, a Franciscan friar and ecumenical teacher committed to bearing witness to the deep wisdom of Christian mysticism and traditions of action and contemplation. This commitment led Raw to establish the Center for Action and Contemplation. They almost sound opposing terms, don't they? A Center for Action and contemplation. Raw has some important and helpful things to say to us about our connection to the earth. So I confess my indebtedness to him for what I share this morning. Raw laments how we have reduced the idea of being Christian downed a little more than being part of a common-minded private club. He writes, when we are in right relationship, we might say in love, there is the Christ, the body of God, and there is the church. But Christians sadly whittled that great mystery 
down into something small, exclusive and manageable. The church became a Catholic, Orthodox or Protestant private club. One not necessarily formed by people who were in communion with anything else and only rarely with the natural world, with non-Christians or even with other Christians outside their own denominations. That's my emphasis. And that observation leads him to the sad conclusion that our very suffering now, our condensed presence on this common nest that we have largely fouled, will soon be the one thing that we finally share in common. But it also leads him to an important hope that it might well be the one thing that will bring us together politically and religiously. I hope to God he is right in that hope. There is no disputing that people have fractured around political brands that have paid scant regard to the overwhelming body of science that is calling for urgent action for the sake of our planet. We have also fractured around brands of church and strains of religious dogma and theology that have equally deafened so many to the voice of creation, to the voice of God that speaks to us from the muted voice of the earth as it groans ever more loudly under the stresses human society inflicts upon it. I share Raw's dream that the earth and its life systems on which we all entirely depend might soon become the very things that will convert us to a simple lifestyle, to necessary community and to an inherent and universal sense of reverence for the holy. The reality is that we all breathe the same air. We all drink the same water. But this dream requires more than just our hopes and prayers. It requires action. And part of that action is we who recognise our responsibility as stewards of this fragile ecosystem, using our voices to speak up and demand action from our leaders of government and industry. And we must continue the little changes that we have started in the form of our recycling station. Did you realise how much recyclable product we were sending to the rubbish until we started collecting them and sending them to places where they can be used to create new products. It's amazing. Now, Raw has some wonderful ways of making his point. Making the point that this is something that the entirety of the human community must do together, he quips, there are no Jewish, Christian or Muslim versions of these universal elements. All water is holy water. Even before the benefit of a priest's waved hand, it is always and everywhere two parts hydrogen, and one part oxygen, and boiler. We have the absolute miracle of liquid water, absolutely necessary for all that lives. The earth indeed is the very body of Christ. And it is from this body that we are born, live, 
suffer and resurrect to eternal life. Either all that is God's great project, or we may rightly wonder whether anything is. Of course, Raw is not the first to recognise this shared responsibility. As long ago as the 4th century, St Augustine recognised by both East and West as a doctor of the church, said that the church consists in the state of communion of the whole world. The church consists in the state of communion of the whole world. Another express the same conviction this way. The world is not a problem to be solved. It is a living being to which we belong. The world is part of our own self and we are part of its suffering wholeness. It is this wholeness that is calling to us now, that needs our response. It needs us to return to our own root and rootedness, to our relationship to the sacred within creation. Only from the place of sacred wholeness and reverence can we begin the work of healing of bringing the whole world back into balance. This is not a side issue for the church. We understand that this is integral to the work of salvation. This is very powerfully made clear by theologian Sally McFaig, describing creation as the body of God and the place of salvation. She writes, creation as the place of salvation means that the health and well-being of all creatures and parts of creation is what salvation is all about. It is God's place and our place, the one and only place. So let's be careful to not go down the rabbit burrow of thinking that salvation is about a guarantee that when we die, we'll get to go to some other glorious place called heaven. That is escapist self-centered dogma that we don't hear from Jesus. Instead, Jesus talked to us con constantly about being part of the work of creating the new earth and the new heaven, both totally extensions of this current world, but transformed by the values of the kingdom of God. Jesus was content to let what happens beyond death to look after itself, and it certainly did. And so should we. Jesus constantly called us to be part of his movement of salvation to transform the earth. As Raw reminds us, Can we imagine anything better than when our minds are festering and our hearts are breaking, finding healing among the silence of mountains or fields or listening to the simple steadying rhythms of the waves? The slowness and the stillness gradually takes us over. Our breathing deepens and our hearts calm and our hungers relent. And when serenity is restored, new perspectives open to us. 
and difficulty can begin to seem like an invitation to new growth. I told you that Raw founded the Centre for Action and Contemplation and that my sharing this morning was heavily influenced by him. But we know how, that, how true that is, don't we? We don't need someone like Richard Raw to tell us. But sometimes we need to be reminded. So in this season of creation, we are invited into a friendship with nature that entails a willingness to be alone and to be out there into the sphere of contemplation. We are invited to let that solitude clarify our hearts. And the irony of that is that in that solitude, we come to feel and appreciate how intimately connected we are with the world, with the creation. And that then requires us to take action. The other part of the action and contemplation, the lifting up of our voice for those who have lost their voice or don't have a voice to preserve this healing balance in our world. Amen. I invite you to join me in this profession of faith. We belong to the Creator in whose image we are all made. In God we are breathing, in God we are living, in God we share the life of all creation. We belong to Jesus Christ, the true icon of God and of humanity. In him God is breathing, in him God is living, through him we are reconciled. We believe in the, belong to the Holy Spirit who gives us new life and strengthens our faith. In the Spirit, love is breathing. In the Spirit, truth is living. The breath of God always moves us. We belong to the Holy Trinity who is one in all and three in one. In God we are all made. In Christ we are all saved. In the Spirit we are all united. Christ, reconnect us, 
using us gently and making us one. In our time of prayers this week, there are some responses that I invite you to share. Let us pray. Loving God, even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she places her young near your altar. You are attentive to all you have made. God who listens to every living thing, help us listen as you do. Loving God, help us provide refuge to every animal and plant with whom we live. Help us be attentive to all you have made. God, in whom all creation subsists, help us listen as you do. Loving God, when Jesus cried out and gave up his spirit, the earth shook and the rocks split. You are known by the whole of creation that listens to you. God, to whom all creation responds, help us respond to you. Loving God, help us hear and know you just as the earth and rocks do. Help us to learn from the way in which we see creation recognise your glorious beauty. God to whom all creation responds, help us respond to you. Loving God, you are present in your creation and seek to heal her wounds. You can be found walking in the garden. Open our eyes to see you, the gardener. God, who is present with your creation, help us be present too. Loving God, we often abandon your creation and cause its wounds. Help us to follow in your footsteps and learn to walk in the garden like you. God, who is present with your creation, Help us be present too. Loving God, who hears every voice, knows every cry of injustice and is attentive to the suffering of the earth, teach us to listen. Bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may listen to the world you have created and not close ourselves off from it. Reveal to us the ways in which we have failed to hear your voice in how we treat the earth. God, who listens to every living thing, help us listen as you do. Amen. So we come to the close of this week's Sunday Meditations. And as we do, I offer you this blessing. May God, who established the dance of creation, who marveled at the lilies of the field, who transforms the chaos to order, lead us to transform our lives and the church, to listen to the voice of all creatures that reflect God's glory in creation. It's been wonderful to have you join us in this time of Sunday Meditations. Uh, may you know the voice of Christ in the days ahead, connecting you to the created world, and give you serenity and new perspective. You shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace, and the mountains and the hills Shall clap, shall clap their hands, and the trees of the field shall 